We're going to come out. We're going to go uh, into Pretty Harbor through the south entrance here. We're going to come around, go into Telegraph. When an emergency call comes in from a boater in distress off our coastline, often the people who gear up and head out on the water are volunteers. We go out in conditions that everyone else is heading back into shore. The Ladysmith and District Marine Rescue Society, which operates the Royal Canadian Marine Search and Rescue Station 29, is the second busiest volunteer marine rescue organization on the B.C. coast. Since 1990, members have responded to over 3,000 calls. Our pages will go off at 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 in the afternoon. It uh, doesn't matter what the weather is, we're there, and we do go out literally 24-7, 365. We tend to get more calls from recreational boaters in the summer. We have more calls from commercial boaters in the winter, including medical response. We do fire emergencies. We provide assistance to local EMS, as well as the islanders that live in our area. Every individual has a call that sticks in their memory. Um, there was a mariner who bought a new boat. Uh, he had six people on board, towing uh, a little inflatable, hit a deadhead and was underwater in seconds. And there were children on board. We arrived on scene. We had to treat for hypothermia, but all of those six people who were in the water luckily are, are happily at home. We've had some bad calls, there's no doubt. We've gone to calls where there have been lives lost. We've been to calls where multiple boats have sunk in fires. Their existing rescue boat, the second oldest active vessel in the RCM SAR fleet, has reached the end of its service life. The boat that we have now was purchased in 1999. It's been in, in service since 2000. Uh, it's gone through three sets of engines. The current motors have 1,200 hours on them, and it has gone on very many missions. It took the volunteers three years to raise over $325,000 from the community and through grants to buy a new responder vessel. The 9-meter rigid hull inflatable was built by Liquid Metal Marine of Sydney, B.C. She's powered by twin 250 horsepower Yamaha four-stroke engines and it's equipped with state-of-the-art electronics. Let go of the stern line. The cabin console is equipped with 18-inch shock absorbers, significantly reducing impact forces in rough sea conditions. So it's a, a nitrogen suspension system, an ice system, which acts like a big shock absorber. We can stay out longer, our crews get less fatigue. The new vessel provides a much safer platform. It's a larger boat so we can transport patients in the back of it much safer. The vessel is fresh off the production line and before it can be placed into dedicated marine search and rescue activities, volunteers need to learn how to use her. All of us are Transport Canada certified and trained. We go through in-house training. We receive training through the Canadian Coast Guard at the Riot School in Banfield, as well as through RCM SARS training facilities uh, down in Victoria. We meet every week. The boat is out at least two or three times a week with people on the water training. Nick volunteered to be the victim in a kayak rescue oh. training session on today's excursion in the waters off Thetis Island. We live in a, in a marine community. We're all boaters. We love the water. And this is our way of providing service back to the community that we're part of. It's an old cliche, but mariners will always help mariners. The teamwork and the camaraderie, but also the support that we get from the community really does make this a worthwhile activity. The new all-weather, multi-function, high-speed rescue craft will be officially put into service this summer, plying the waters from Dodds Narrows to Sampson Narrows and servicing all the Gulf Islands in between. In Ladysmith, I'm Annette Lucas.